Hey, welcome back to the channel. I'm Simon Osimo, and if you're joining us for the first time, welcome. I'm so glad that you are here. Now, each week I share an episode from the Who I Became podcast, and I'm joined today by my guest, Nina Perez. She is the author of Hit Me With Your Best Shot, and she's the podcast host of Straight Talk, No Sugar Added, two incredible projects. Now, this episode is inspiring, it is impactful and she shares an amazing story of overcoming. I know you're going to get so much out of it. You really are. But before we dive into the content, can I just remind you that if this resonates with you, please like and share with your circle of influence. It means so much for the growth of the show. It really does. But without further ado, let's just dive into this week's episode with my conversation with Nina Perez. <laughs> It's a real honor and a privilege and a pleasure to talk to you. I know when I came on your podcast, I had a lot of fun. So I'm really excited to share you with my listeners. So welcome to the Game podcast. Oh, thank you so much. It's an honor to be here. It was really, really fun having you on Straight Talk, No Sugar Added. So this is, uh, I'm looking forward to this. Well, Nina, you are the host of Straight Talk, No Added Sugar, which is just, it's an amazing name for a podcast. This podcast guy really is. I love that. <laughs> Uh, and we're going to cover quite a lot today. You are the author of Hit Me With Your Best Shot. And I kid you not, I just came off of the phone with a friend of mine in New York and I said, I've got to go. Um, I'm about to record a podcast episode with, with Nina. She said, oh, what's she done? I said, well, she's the author of this book, Hit Me With Your Best Shot. And she said, what a fantastic name for <laughs> a book. And I said, it really is. And I said, wait till you, Peggy, wait till you hear her story. It's incredible. So maybe tell us a little bit about your book then, Hit Me With Your Best Shot. How did that come about? Yeah, it came about because I had, you know, a lot of tr trauma and stuff that happened in my life. And it was time to face that monster head on to overcome it. And so, you know, I'm a woman of faith. I do pray a lot and stuff. And, you know, it was, it was a challenge to kind of like, keep moving forward in my life and things that I know that God was calling me to do because I was so bogged down with the victim mindset and, you know, the, I can't do it mentality. Right. So my book hit me with your best shot. It's actually because I was in a horrible domestic violent relationship. I was abused as a child, you know, things like that. So hit me was, was intentional. Right. Um, and it's a story really about, abuse, uh, molestation, teen pregnancy, domestic violence that almost ended in my murder. Um, really hard times. I was married before divorced. So poverty, living in shelter, you know, all that kind of stuff. But it also talks about finding faith and, um, you know, overcoming life when life hits you hard. So it's, it's just my journey. Um, and it's really impacted a lot of people more than I thought it would. I, I wrote it for, Really, I should say for um, kind of selfish reasons, I wanted to get through my journey and it was cathartic for me. But I realized that I don't own my story anymore. My story is not about me anymore. My story is now to impact somebody else's life. So, yeah. And I love what you said there, because the type of people I interview on the Herbert Cain podcast, you look at them now. And everyone looks like they're very successful as you are. You know, you're an author, uh, an accomplished podcast host, amongst other things. And it looks like your life has always been that way. But we really forget or we don't appreciate the backstory and sacrifice and hard work it takes some people to sort of get where they where they are. So uh, maybe let's just jump forward a little bit and then we'll sort of yeah. jump back. Just sort of maybe tell people where you are now. What is it that you do, Nina? And what are you best known for? Yeah. So I'm wearing a lot of hats right now. Right. So I am writing like another one or two books that I'm working on right now, but I'm a, I'm a mind flow and NLP practitioner. So neuro linguistic practitioner. And I help really, I help women mainly. Um, they're about 35 and older to master their game. And we create mental clarity, emotional freedom so that people can start creating like the financial freedom that they want in their life without, you know, having too much risk. And so that's what I've been focusing on, but I'm also, a, a executive chef by trade and, and a director of culinary operations. So, you know, I've gone through a, a few, I do a few things. I do a few things. I, I was just asked yesterday if I sleep. Um, so I think I sleep three to four hours a, a day. It's something like that. 
<laughs> well, we, talk, we, talk, we talk a lot about um, self pivots and self discoveries on this show, but yeah. I guess you're the, you could be the first person that seems to pivot during the day to different yeah. hats that you, that you wear. <laughs> Literally, wear your chef hat as well. So I, I like it. And so you know, you're in a seem to be in a good spot now. You spoke about. Um, changing your mindset from that victim mentality i guess yeah. well, where did it start to change then so you know you're obviously you're in a relationship that had domestic um abuse um i imagine physical and emotional yeah when when did your mindset if i get my words out when did your mindset start to change thinking there, there is more for me in this life better than my yeah. my circumstance you know I think it's maybe within the last like 15 years or so um, before that, one thing I always have been is a go getter. So I've always been somebody, even in the pain, even through depression, even through anxiety, all of that, I still rise to the occasion. And I think I was just living just like get to the next day, get to the next day, you know, uh, so self development started to become a part of my life, maybe within the last 10 to 15 years. And I think it's because at the same time, at that time, I also found my faith. Also, I found, you know, God, and I started to read the Bible and started to implement that in my life. And it really changed my life. Um, and I think that's what woke me up. You know, that's what really said, okay, there is more to life than what you're living, this day-to-day -day existence where you're barely feeling like you can get up in the morning. This is not right. You know, so I started to just start doing some some self-seeking, self-development work, um, diving into my faith and what does the word say about me as a person and who I am. And it just made me a much better person. And so then I started to get into neuro-linguistic programming. I, I went in for my master's on it and I did, you know, just trying to really um, not just change my life, but if I'm going to be here, I'm going to try to change as many lives as I can on the way, even if it's just one. You know, I just, if I get impact that one person and that life changes, I know that that life changing changes another life and then changes another life. You know what I mean? So I'm not here to touch a billion lives. If I can touch one life, I'm good. And so when did this happen then? When did you have this sort of realization? I mean, was there, as we say in England, the straw that broke the camel's back? Did something happen? Mm -hmm. You say, okay, I need to change this. Or was there a, a shift in mindset? What, what caused yeah. this sort of great revelation? And maybe it was your faith, Nina, I don't know. But I'd be interested to know what, what changed your mindset. Yeah, well, I'm going to tell you a, a really quick story. So um... You can make it long. We've got time. You have to go quick. <laughs> No, because it was when you said that it it triggered a memory. And it I think this was the event that did this to me. Um, you know, we were me and my husband were doing really well. Um, we we had a home we were buying and we had our cars and we had, you know, all that stuff that we think means really well. And um I'll never forget, I was very uneasy at work. I used to be a medical assistant and an ultrasound technician. And I was at work, but I was struggling with work, crying all the time depressed all the time. I just was not happy and I couldn't understand why. Um, and so I'll, I'll never forget this. Uh, I was praying at home one day and I was laying in bed and I said, Lord, listen, I, I feel very depressed and very anxious. And I feel like I'm being called to go back to school to be a chef because that's what I wanted to do since I was a little child. Um, but it wasn't in my mind anymore, you know, but all of a sudden I was having dreams. I was having these feelings and these visions. And I'm like, what is going on here? So man, Simon, one day I'm, I'm laying in bed, I'm crying and, you know, boohooing and complaining to God. Right. <laughs> and I was like, if you, I said, I don't know if this is you, God, telling me it's time for me to like go back to school. But if it's you and you come down here physically and you tell me I am released to leave my job and go back to school, I will do it. But you got to do it physically, Lord. I'm not, you know, I, I don't know what I'm doing. Who did he send? Who did he send? He sent my husband about 35, 45 minutes later. My husband comes home from work. He comes into the room and he's like, uh... He goes, something kind of weird happened in the car. And I'm like, sure. He goes, I was listening to praise and worship. I'm praying. And I don't know how or why, but I feel like God would told me to come in here and tell you that you're released. And I'm like, what? He's like, there you I mean, I just used those words, Simon. I just used those words. My husband wasn't even in the house, let alone, you know? So 
I just started crying. I told my husband the story. He's like, what? I'm like, yeah, went the next day, quit my job, went back to school. This then started my journey because when I went back to school, I had to leave my job, right? So then 2008, as you know, hit here in the US where everybody lost a lot of things. We lost the home, the cars, we lost everything, we went homeless. And um, I'll never forget having a temper tantrum with God, right? And saying, you know, why would you do that when I asked you for this sign, you sent me the sign and now we're homeless, you know? And I'll never forget that feeling. Like it was almost like an audible voice, if you will. Like it, he said, I told you to be obedient. I never said it would be easy. Well, then I put my big girl pants on, you know what I mean? And I started working on myself and I started like really head forward, just going in. I became the valedictorian of the school. I went and got my bachelor's degree. I did everything I had to do to show my my Lord, my faith, my family, that you can do all things. You can do all things and you can do it, especially if you, well, for me, with God, right? And so that was very key and pivotal for my life. And I, and I really believe, I've never been I never really thought about this before, but I really believe that was the pivot. That was the the moment in my life where I realized I'm not alone. I'm not alone and I can do this, you know? So that changed well, me. Well, I'm glad that you didn't keep that story brief because it's a powerful, powerful story. And I guess, you know, I this isn't a Christian podcast, but my listeners know that yeah. I'm a Christian. So every now and again, I'll interject uh, my faith and understanding in there. But what we often look for is we're looking for uh, miracles, which is the Lord himself. But I believe right. like, you, you know, sometimes it's people that come into your life and whether you believe into a higher power, whether you be, believe in, in God or some other type of spirituality, it's generally in another person is where you'll see that yeah. sort of, where, where, where does God deliver himself or deliver himself in another person on that occasion for you as your, your husband. Incredible. Yeah. But, so here's another point then. So that's where you are now. What about so you overcame sort of self doubts and victim mentality through your belief in a higher power? Where where did those original thoughts come from of being the, the self doubt, the the mm. victim? Uh, my yeah. life can't be any more than what it is. I mean, um, upbringing, environment, mindset. What what was yep. it for you? Yep. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> all, all of the okay, I, just, I, just, yeah. I should interview myself, Nina, today. I'm, I'm, I'm noting it. I like this. Okay, good. So funny. Yeah, I mean, it came in really young, right? Because since I was, when I was born, um, my mother and father had an affair and that's how I came about. So my father was married to another woman. My, my mom was married to another man. They had an affair and I was the result of that. And so my father denied me at birth. And so I was rejected from birth. Right. And so my story in my book will tell you like some of the trauma that I went through, even as a child. And then my stepfather, my, that my mother ended up marrying after, you know, molested me as a child. Right. And that traumatizes you. And it also puts you in shame and it gives you hurt and it makes you feel unworthy. Right. So it started there. I mean, we, you know, when we don't, uh, protect our children from things like this or the trauma that comes in and we don't deal with that trauma, that's when the adult becomes self-doubtful, you know, um, does, um, makes decisions that aren't healthy, you know, things like that. So that's where it started. It was that it was environment, you know, it was toxic. Um, and I love my mother to this day, my father passed away, but, um, you know, it's things like that, that, traumatize you there's trauma that happens there and so i had to really dig deep i mean really deep and i'm sure there's still stuff there that i have to still deal with you know um but mindset is key and that's what's helped me really overcome i mean i've been suicidal i've been through all of that right so i know life is worth it i know there's value and i know that i'm valuable and i love what you said there and it's fascinating to me that you've had all this hurt and pain adversity you know you've overcome you're in a incredible um place and i will tell my listeners go and listen to straight talk night of sugar it is a an incredible podcast and you should clearly get um, nina's book um hit me with your best shot to, to learn more about this but 
and we won't have enough time to unpack all this Nina in this yeah. conversation but <laughs> yeah. what I'd love to know is where where does your openness come from maybe other people are, are thinking the same as me yeah in, in the UK where I'm from you know that stiff upper lip we're very reserved you know you very rarely do air your dirty linen in public in, in the US in the Midwest where I live you know everything is very sort of um uh, Christ focused, it's very Lutheran, it's very sort of like withdrawn, and people don't yeah. t- tend to be as open as what you are. So I'd love to hear about your journey as to how come you can now share your adversity with the world uh, and yeah. sit there with a smile on your face with me, sort of laughing about it. You know what? I do things afraid, Simon. I've always done things afraid. And my family also very reserved, very much upset when this book was written. Um, because it aired a lot of dirty linen, as you said. Um, But I realized that there is freedom in truth. There is freedom in truth. And even though there is fear that also comes with the truth and, you know, there's judgment and there's all of that that comes with it, I'd rather be free. I'd rather be free. And so I've been, always been kind of hard headed that way, right? If you say no, I go, why? You know, and I, and I challenge it. And so if you're telling me keep secrets, why? Why are we keeping secrets? What is that about? And so I air it. And I feel like if I air out my stuff, then you do not have any authority to come to me and try to catch me on something. You know what I mean? Like if it's out there, it's out there. I own it. It's what it is. Yeah. And we like to feel like we're perfect, uh, but yeah. none of us are perfect. We all have some type of adversity. We all have some type of secret, but we yeah. feel if only the, if the world knew the real Simon, no one would like me. We, we all have that moment and stuff in there. And, mm-hmm. and there was a quote from, I don't know if I read this in your bio, Nina, or somewhere else on your website somewhere, but you said, part of your motivation is knowing that you will make it for another day. You know, there, yeah. there could be, people listening to this podcast with various different types of sort of mindset challenges that they've got. But, you know, that's a very powerful quote from you, that you knew that you will make it for another day. Can maybe sort mm-hmm. of share some um, wisdom for my listeners yeah. about that? Yeah. Um, I realized when I tried to commit suicide or used to even think about my suicidal thoughts, now I'm looking back and, you know, I realized I made it through another day. I made it through another day. You know, when, when my son's father put the gun to my head and pulled the trigger. It was, I really feel it was because of God that safety got jammed and I'm sitting here today. So I only like, like right now, Simon, me and your conversation is so important because it is the only moment I'm promised, right? I'm, it's the only moment, but I, but I feel like I've made it through so many days. Even if this is the last moment, I'm okay. You know, I will make it through another day. You'll make it through another day, either here in the, in afterlife, whatever. But with the whole point of that quote is, is that don't be discouraged. Don't think you can't make it through. You absolutely can. And when you look at your life, I am sure that all of us can look and say, wow, I can't believe I made it through X, Y, Z. I can't believe I made it through molestation. I can't believe I made it through almost being murdered. I can't believe I made it through all of that but I did. And so I'm here another day and hopefully I'll be here tomorrow to say it again. That's what it's powerful, about. Powerful, powerful. And can I, um, it's a very delicate and difficult question I want to ask you, Nina, and sure. it just came from some something you just shared. But at that point when uh, your ex-husband, was it your ex-husband or your, your stepfather held the no, gun? No, it, it, it was my first, my first boyfriend, my son's your, your, father. Your first boyfriend. Mm-hmm. So, so at yeah. that point when the, you know, the gun is being held to your head, um, and the moment before he pulled the trigger, and obviously, um, for whatever reason, the, the gun didn't go off. What, what were you thinking about? We often talk about his near-death experiences. I mean, that, that must be incredibly, incredibly daunting to yeah. have someone put a firearm to your head yeah. and, and you believe they're going to gonna pull the, the trigger. What, what were you, in those moments, what were you truly thinking of? I was, well, first of all, the first thing that came to my head was to save my son because his his the words out of his mouth when I saw the gun in his hand was, I'm going to kill you, I'm going to kill the baby, and then I'm going to kill myself. So my initial thought was the baby cannot die in the hands of this monster. So I sent my son outside the door downstairs to my mother's house. We were living with my mom at the time. The debilitating fear, Simon, it was debilitating. It was, I was frozen. I was cold. I had no, 
I didn't know what to do, but to plead for my life. And by telling this person that I love him, I love him, I love him, I love him. Um, but it is the most scariest moment of my entire life. It was, um, but it was, it was crippling. It was crippling and debilitating. Um, I didn't think about my whole life or anything, but I did think about my son. I did think about my son because I felt like if he kills me, what would stop him from going downstairs and killing my son? So I had to plead for my life. And yeah, it's scary. And it actually lasted a very long time, Simon, because for years I didn't sleep. If I slept, it was like two hours and I'm up looking around and I sleep an hour and then I'm up, you know, and I've had insomnia since, and that's been 20, no, 30 30 years, over 30 years. Yeah, it's wow. debilitating. It's, it's an incredible story. But I mean, yeah. the, um, the running theme through all of this, uh, just how you overcome, Nina. I mean, it's, in, it's incredible that you Thank can you. be open and um, share and be vulnerable, but the, how you overcome, I know that someone's going to be listening to us somewhere and they're going to see the strength of you and thinking, well, you know, if Nina can do it, why not me? You know, right. why, why, why can I not do this? And I guess That's right. the other sensitive question that's going through my mind Nina I like to ask those questions that maybe others either avoid or don't want to ask but <laughs> have you ever considered you know, obviously now you're you're a believer now you believe in a higher power believe in God but have you ever asked yourself why do these not negative or bad things because not all of them have been negative or bad I mean you, you mentioned yeah. teenage pregnancy but it was sort of an adverse thing but um what are your reflections been as to well why why me why, why do these adverse things keep happening to me yeah, of course. I've thought of that. Of course. Um, you know, I was, yeah, it's funny because I did ask God that maybe like 10 years ago, you know, and, um, and I realized Simon, that my story is not for me. I think that's what I realized. You know, the, the more that people have listened to my podcast or my story, what I get is that that saved my life or that changed my life or did, you know, in, in the freedom that comes, because I, I think my story gives people permission to be truthful and to be honest and to be free and to know that they're not alone. And so actually I thank God for my story. I used to be mad about my story, but I thank him for my story because I see that my story is the impact, right? And so because I'm a person who does believe, I know that God sacrificed way more than I've had, I've had to sacrifice. So I, you know, I always measure it that way, but I realize that my life, like I said before, I don't own it anymore. Now that next person that's listening to me, that's thinking about suicide or in a domestic violent relationship or is being molested or any of that can now understand that they can use this story to break free from whatever it is that's holding them on bondage. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know what to say, Nina. You, you are delivering <laughs> you are delivering such wisdom today during this conversation. It's, it's it really is. And you know, when I when I look at, you know, normally I'll say to my guests, you know, what's the biggest self-discovery you might have made? I mean, with, with you, there's most probably a long list, but I guess I will ask you a question. You know, what, what is the, the one single most um, or biggest self-discovery, however you want to sort of frame that question? Self-discovery, yeah. The biggest self-discovery I've seen is my, I'm actually a great, I'm actually good. Like, I think my, my favorite thing that I've learned through my self-discovery is I'm a powerful badass, Simon. You know, I used to feel like such a victim. I used to feel like such. So to, to self-discover that I have so many gems in me that can help impact somebody's life and change them is everything. And I love that. I love that I am who I am. I love that. So that's the biggest self-discovery is I'm authentically true. I'm me. Love it. And I always say I need to put a bell in my podcast whenever someone says who I became or infers that type of way, but incredible. And so here's what I would say then. So we've got the straight talk, no added sugar. Your no passion, sugar added. No sugar straight added. Straight talk, you go, no correct, sugar added. Yeah. Correct, correct me. Correct me. There you go. Do it. Do it. <laughs> now, I get things wrong all the time. So my, my listeners <laughs> me know too. Yeah, yeah. Simon's just talking waffle again. So they, I'm sure they get used to it by now. But maybe tell a little bit, people, about that project and then, you know, where your book's available and stuff. So just wrap up in closing, telling sure. us where we can connect with you and, and projects you're working on. 
Yeah, well, you can connect with me on all of the platforms uh, under Straight Talk, No Sugar Added, or Nina Perez. Either one, you'll find me. Nina is N E E N A Perez. Um, and uh, Straight Talk, No Sugar Added is birthed out of me wanting to have real, authentic conversations with people that have a story. And they want to use that story to change somebody else's life, kind of like what I like to do with my story. And so that's how that came about because I'm dealing with a lot of people are talking to a lot of people, even some of my clients who are dealing with feeling overwhelmed and stuck. And you know what it is, Simon? We are inundated with information, but we starve for wisdom, right? And so that's, I think that's what's happening in the world today. We have way too much coming at us. So I'm trying to have real conversations. I don't care if you have, if you're famous, if you're not famous, you got a story that can impact somebody's life. That's what I want to talk about. And I want us to do it with no sugar added. So that's how that came about. But well, yeah. Unless you've it. got a name like your podcast, I keep ballsing it up. So you, you've got a name. <laughs> <laughs> at least you've got it. And then, you, then your book, I believe your book is available yeah. on Amazon, correct? Hit me yes, it's shot. available anywhere that books are sold um, on um, in Spanish as well. I did get it translated in Spanish. So it's in Spanish and it's an ebook and regular book. And it's hit me with your best shot. How I overcame a hard hitting life. So, yeah. Well, Nina, it's been an honor and a privilege to talk to you. And all the Likewise. links, that you, all the, the things that you've mentioned, I'll link those in the show notes so people can Great. reach out to you and find you. But um, you take care and look forward to talking to you again soon. Yes, thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you. Thank you for joining the Who I Became podcast. To help spread this inspiring story, be sure to share it with your friends, hit the like button, and of course, subscribe to our channel so you won't miss out on any future episodes. We'd also love to hear how this story impacted you. So leave a comment on whatever platform you're watching us from. To learn more about this episode, our guests, or Simon, head over to the Simon Osimo slash podcast and sign up to receive the latest information delivered straight to your inbox. Once again, thank you for joining us for the Who I Became podcast.